This video, I'm gonna tell you how I traveled for three months of 2023 across the world and still had four restaurants working for me. So most of you guys are probably sitting in a place in your restaurant right now where you can barely even get a weekend off or time to take a one week vacation with, with your family. And you know, a lot of clients that I work with, that's where they start. They come with me saying, Andrew, you know, I, I wish I could be able to take a vacation or, you know, whenever we do take a vacation, I just close down the restaurant because that's the only way that I can actually get away and not have to worry about things. And what I want to tell you is that that is one way of owning a restaurant, but it is not the only way to own a restaurant. So basically what I did is years ago, I decided that the restaurant life that I had learned to lead was not the kind of life that I wanted to do. So I had to either get better or get out. And so what I did is I went back and I revisited all of my hiring processes, my operations processes, my marketing, my finances, because the business I had wasn't getting me where I wanted to go and the life that I wanted to have. And so I started to build a business that worked for me instead of the other way around. And what I can tell you now, having done that, being able to travel, you know, I went to Australia, I went to Italy, I went to Greece, um, I went to Mexico a few different times, um, also went to some conferences in there as well. Um, you know, a passion of mine is scuba diving, so I, you know, did that on the Great Barrier Reef, did that in the Socorro Islands off the coast of Mexico. Um, I've been able to do all of this while my business has ran, uh, including my coaching business, ran without me as well. Um, and the reason I've been able to set that up is, is there's really three main things. Number one is you need to have the right people in place to ensure that that happens. Because look at it this way. Most people, when they go on vacation, they come back and there's a laundry list of things for them to do or things that didn't work or mistakes that happened or, you know, this person called out here and then this happened and this person needs a refund. And like, you know, there's all these things that happen. And so you come back and you're like, why did I even leave? Because now there's more work that I have to do to catch up from even being gone. And most likely while you're even on vacation in the first place, you were probably getting texts, you were getting, you know, calls from people, you were having issues brought up to your emails probably going off like these are all the things. And so even when you know, you're on vacation, maybe you're at Disney World or whatever, uh, you know, you're still dealing with the stress of work while you're trying to have fun. So you're neither there on vacation, but you're also neither there at work, right? And so number one, the thing that you need to have is the right people in place. And so what I always tell my clients is that when they have this laundry list of stuff to do, that's like a neon sign being like, fix me. These are the things that when I leave, don't get done or a process that I haven't defined. Or maybe there's no one there to do those things because if you're the one that always does those things, well, what did you think was going to happen? when you left, right? If there's no one else who can handle those things, you have basically cemented yourself into a role that you can't escape from, right? So if you're the only one that can handle a customer complaint, guess what? If a customer complaint happens, they're still going to come to you, right? If you're the one that has to sort out who covers a shift, they're still going to come to you no matter where you are in the world, right? They're not going to magically figure it out because the other thing too is when we're there, we don't understand that we do this, but what we actually do is we solve problems for a lot of people. It's called reverse delegation. It's basically instead of passing things down for people to solve and things for them to do, they bring problems up to us and then we solve them. The only problem with that is once we solve those problems for people and we continue to solve these problems for people, what ends up happening is that we rob them of the opportunity to solve it on their own. So let's give you an example of that. Say someone needs a shift filled. And they're like, I've talked to people and nobody's going to take it, right? Whether they did or not, we don't know. So they come to you and they say, Andrew, you know, I, I can't work this shift. Um, what can I do about it? So then you go and you find someone to fix it, blah, 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 blah. And ultimately then what you've just taught them is that they need to come to you to solve it right? Or, hey, I can't find this, you know, I can't find the toilet paper. Where do we keep it? If they come to you and you always say, oh, well, I'll just go get it and I'll fix it. What they've learned is that it's easier to go to you and get you to solve the problem rather than them figuring out on their own. So one trick that I use is when people come to me with a problem, I say, man, that's terrible. How do you think we're going to solve that? Right? And I put it back on them. Okay, well, what have you tried so far to fix that? Oh, well, I haven't tried anything. Okay, well, what do you think we should do? right? Where do you think the toilet paper might be, right? Where would you look? 
if you were toilet paper, where might you be? Right. And so what we've actually done is made the experience of them asking for help more painful. And so if they know that every time they come and ask you for help, you are going to be asking them what they did to solve it, all of that kind of stuff, then they're pretty soon going to learn. I might as well just figure it out on my own, because if we are in the answer giving business to people, we will always be in the answer giving business to people, which means we will never get freedom from the business because you can't have control and freedom at the same time. That's number one. You need to have the people in place, right, to handle the things that basically you would do if you were there. Um, and or you need to teach people how to solve things on their own so that they don't even need you in the first place, right? Which brings in my second point, which is the processes. So number one, if someone really doesn't know where the toilet paper is, why don't they know? Did they not get trained on it? Uh, did someone not organize the shelves properly for the dry storage? Like what went wrong there because if someone who's responsible for cleaning the bathrooms can't find the products they need to be able to clean the bathrooms then that is a breakdown in the process right so we need to figure out where that is and we fix that and then ultimately we actually fix the problem because then if we trained everyone on where we keep the products then they should be able to find them right uh, because if we don't and we just say well this person's stupid i'm going to fire them because they can't find toilet paper well then guess what you're going to hire the next person they're still not going to know where toilet paper is because you're not training them on it but if you train them on it and they still don't do it different conversation now i actually have another video on that that i just did as well but the processes need to be there right so what happens when something happens uh you know like someone calls in sick what do you do? What's the, the chain of command? Like, what are the things that happen next? Uh, if there's a customer complaint, what happens? What's the process for that? Um, you know, when you get a rush that comes in unexpectedly, what's the process for that? It's all of these things that we need to have in place and all the things that you're supposed to do, they need to be written down. And everything that your team is supposed to do, they need to be written down because I've seen this way too many times is that when a restaurant owner, they spend 60 plus hours a week inside the business and they are the ones that are single-handedly the glue that keeps everything together. And I will tell you, if you are the glue that keeps everything together, as soon as that glue leaves, everything falls apart right? And if so, you have built yourself a, not even a job, not even a business, but rather a prison because you can never escape that by the way that you're doing it, right? So what we need to do is ensure that other people can execute the things that you do and they need to be able to refer back to something in order to know how to do it. Uh, because a lot of restaurant owners are like, well, I know everything up here in my head. And so therefore I can't possibly train someone on it. I'm like, yeah, because they're not going to ever be inside your head. But if you take what you have in your head and put it on paper, then they should have a reasonable degree of being able to do that thing, right? Even it might not be as good as when you did it, but if they get it done 80% as good as you, that is actually a win because that saves 80% of your time, right? So that's number two. Not only do we need to have the people, but we have to have the processes in place. And then number three, you need to have a laptop. Reason I say a laptop is because even when I am on vacation, I would love to tell you that I didn't check in with work at all for a total of three months, but that's simply not true. My job as an owner is still to check in on the people to make sure the processes are still followed. But what I love about it is I'll be totally honest, I'm passionate about what I do. I actually love what I do. And so, you know, I was sitting on a boat in the Great Barrier Reef. We had very little cell reception there. So I would hotspot on my phone whenever we got close enough, uh, you know, to, uh, to the mainland. And basically I would then check in and be like, hey, you know, what are our KPIs? You know, what are our food costs like? What are our labor costs like? Was checking in with the team, making sure everything was okay. Um, and the reason I still did that is because I still know as a business owner, I want to be on top of the numbers, right? Because they're important to me. Um, and so I should be able to check in. So it's a different view. I shouldn't have to do, but I still need to monitor, right? And basically what that allowed me to do is within 30 minutes a day, I was able to make sure my business was running without me, right? Now, if you're only gone for a week, that's going to be less relevant when you're gone for a month going to be more relevant for you. You know, a week, you could probably get by without really monitoring a whole lot. Uh, but when you start to go away for four, six weeks and beyond, that typically becomes where you need to still monitor your people just to make sure the things that you've laid out are still happening. So if you're sitting in a place right now where you do not have the vacation time you want, where you do not have the freedom you want in your business, just understand that you have learned one way to run a restaurant, but it is not the only way 
to run a restaurant. There are plenty of different ways. I still have restaurants that run successfully, even though I am not there and spend less than five hours a week working on them, right? It is possible. You just have found one way of doing it, and I have found another. And I would love to teach you exactly how to do that. So if you are looking to take more vacations, to have the profitability that you want, all without working 60 to 80 hours a week, would love to help you with that. Feel free to follow me. Feel free to grab one of my links and book in a call. Would love to chat about your situation. But at the end of the day, if you're in this situation right now, remember, people, processes, and a laptop. And that is what you need to be able to take three months of vacations in a year. All right. Bye.